The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. The Bible comes alive when you visit the Holy Land. Travel to Israel with Pastor Ronnie Phillips in May of 2023. Walk where Jesus walked, cry where He died, pray where He prayed, and worship where He worshiped. Your experience will include a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, a cable car ride to the top of Masada, a visit to the Dead Sea, Nazareth, Jericho, Bethlehem, and more. Walk the Via Dolorosa, see Yad Vashem, the memorial to six million martyrs of the Holocaust. Visit Golgotha and the Garden Tomb, and so much more. Dr. Ron Phillips will be our guest teacher. Visit RonniePhillips.org for all the info and begin planning now to join us for this life-changing trip. Greetings, partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips. I'm the lead pastor of Abbott's House in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and the founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. This is Fully Alive, and it is our mission to help you live free and fully alive. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a message that really applies to the current season in which we live in. How to trust God during uncertain times. This is in the book of Nahum. This is from the very first chapter of the book of Nahum. You may say, where is the book of Nahum? Well, I've never read the book of Nahum. Well, I believe today you're going to be challenged, and you're going to receive hope that will help you through dark and difficult days. Enjoy this message. The doctrinal purpose of this book was to comfort Judah, Israel, to warn Nineveh in Assyria. The spiritual purpose, although this book comes across like hellfire and brimstone, it comes across harsh. It speaks to the nature and the sovereignty of Almighty God. God is love. But because God is love, he has to avenge his children who have been victims of demonic leadership and injustice. Now, those of you who are parents, imagine you have two children and one is abusing the other. As a loving parent that loves both of the children, do you address the abuse? Or do you stand back and do nothing because you love them both? See, oftentimes we even by accident criticize God because he is just and because he avenges those that he loves. But you must understand a loving God cannot tolerate the disrespect and abuse of those he loves. At some point, after patience, God has to step in and avenge his children and avenge his people, the true authentic believers that believe in him. Say this with me, leadership matters. It matters. Who leads us is a direct reflection of our hearts, our character, and our beliefs. Romans 15, verse 4. Why, old covenant, Pastor Ronnie, why this old prophetic book? Romans 15, verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What does this say or speak to about the current state of the United States of America? A United States senator that I'll leave unnamed some 40 years ago said that the average life of great civilizations of the world has been about 200 years. He goes on to say that these civilizations have progressed through the following stages. Number one, from bondage to spiritual faith. Number two, from spiritual faith to courage. Number three, from courage to liberty. Number four, from liberty to abundance. From abundance, number five, to selfishness from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, 
and from apathy back to bondage. Welcome to the USA today. This is what God says to those of us who love him, who feel cheated and who are confused by the current state in which we live. Verse 1, a prophecy concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite, the Lord's anger against Nineveh. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. He makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the blossoms of Lebanon fade. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. Oh, but here in the midst of all that, listen to verse 7. The Lord is good. A refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end to Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. So how do we trust God during uncertain times? Number one, just three points for you today, no poem. Number one, we have to trust his character. If you don't know what else to do, you have to trust his character. First, God is love. Everybody agree with that? God is love. How does the Bible define love? In four ways. Brotherly love, motherly love, erotic love, and sacrificial love. Four Greek words. He loves us like a godly parent. He wants intimacy with us in the secret place. He wants to know us intimately. He loves us like a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And he loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins, to be our substitutionary sacrifice, to be mocked, beaten, abused, and die on a bloody cross so that we might live free and fully alive, so that it would no longer be about how good we are, but how good he is. So it would no longer be about what we could do or what we could sacrifice, that we would have a pathway into his heavenly kingdom and access to spiritual power on earth because of what Jesus did. God is a giver. He gave his best. He gives sacrificially. He gives us the love we need to be confident in what he's called us to do. He is love. He is joy, unspeakable and full of glory. He is peace, shalom. He is righteousness, which means God can't cheer on your sin struggle. God's not going to high-five your struggle or anything that's not of him. Yes, there is patience for those struggles. Yes, there is grace for those struggles. But don't ever pretend like Jesus is up there celebrating your struggle. He's not. He can't. He's righteous. He can't mess around with sin. It's not in his character to do so. God is love, but he's also just. We've taught you this, especially those of you who've been with me on Wednesday nights. God is just, which means he's going to do what is right. He, he doesn't fail. He doesn't miss it. But what we learn through the book of Nahum is he's not going to tolerate injustice on God's people long. He's going to be patient with the people involved in wickedness because he's patient. He's loving. He's a God of grace. But there comes a reckoning because to not act on behalf of his believers is not love. At some point, if you love somebody, you're not going to allow them to be abused. You're not going to allow them to be rejected. You're not going to allow them to live under poor leadership. Love has to make a decision. Love has to take action. Love moves, love acts, love breathes, and love avenges. 
How many of you have loved someone? You're going to allow, men, you're going to allow someone to disrespect your wife? No, because you love her. Mom, you're going to allow somebody to mistreat your children? No, because you love them. God's the same way. He's not going to tolerate this mess very long. He's not going to allow us to be under this kind of persecution forever. Yes, he blesses those in persecution. He promised persecution to those of us who believe. But there comes a reckoning and a victory and a reigning with him. So understand, no matter how bad it is for you, if you know Jesus, victory's coming. Victory's coming. I got to get after it here. Trust his character. God is love. God is just. And in this text, God is patient. Slow to become angry, it says in verse 3. So yeah, maybe God hasn't avenged you in your time, but he will avenge his people. Maybe God hasn't swept in and defeated that person that's hurt you on your timetable. Somebody say it's coming. Slow to become angry. This is the only reason ungodly nations like this one are allowed to thrive and survive while operating in wickedness because God is patient. He is patient. I'm thankful he's patient with me, amen? Aren't you thankful he's patient with you? See, we don't want him to be patient with everybody else, but we want him to be patient with us. But he's consistent. That's who he is. That's his character. Not only is God patient, he's powerful. Once he enlists in the fight, it's over, he wins. He doesn't even have to prove himself in the ring. As soon as he shows up to the fight, he's already the victor because he's God Almighty. Adonai. He controls the winds and the atmosphere. He can calm the storm. He can raise the dead. He can heal the sick. I love what it says here. It talks about the whirlwind. My goodness. We'll get to that. God is all-powerful. God delivers his people. Yes, you may be in bondage. You may be in slavery. You, you may be the product of injustice. You may be in a country where you don't have the freedom to worship or love Jesus. Oh, but a reckoning is coming. God delivers his people. Maybe not on our timetable, but he is a deliverer. And our day is coming. God is jealous. Jealous. Exodus 34, verse 14, for you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. This is a jealousy of possession, not position. He's jealous because he loves you, not because of what you've done for him. This is not about his position. It's about his possession. He's not jealous because he's some insecure leader. He's jealous because he loves you. The jealousy of possession, not position. Not pettiness, but passion. He is the creator of the world. He created us and he demands our loyalty. To not be jealous of his creation, his prized possession, is to tolerate evil, which God cannot do. He doesn't tolerate evil and he doesn't tolerate rebellion against himself or his people. Next, when speaking of God's character, God avenges those who trust him. Ezekiel teaches us that God will set his face against those of us who do evil. I don't want that as my testimony. I don't want to go so far into iniquity that God has to set his face against me or make me his target. And so I would say we must repent for all unrighteousness, all our wickedness, all of our sin. As a nation, we must repent. As individuals, we must repent. As a church, we must repent. As families, we must repent. We must turn from our wicked ways. We must trust God during uncertain times. Why? Next, because God is good. All of this harsh Rhetoric, And then it says in verse 7, Hey, but reminder, the Lord is good. 
a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end to Nineveh. This is going to mess with some of you, but the end of Nineveh was an act of love. After 200 years of disobedience and dishonor and scattering his people about and demonic activity and the killing of babies and all of these things, it was an act of love. It had to be done. Sometimes difficult decisions have to be made if you're going to go to the next level in the kingdom. God can't tolerate evil. He is good. So we must trust his character during uncertain times. Post-pandemic, all kinds of crazy things going on. You can't turn on the TV, can't even watch the World Series without somebody making it political. All this demonic stuff going on, you've got to remember who you are in Christ. You've got to trust the character of God. You've got to stick by the stuff. You've got to stick by the word of God. And even if it's not popular, even if they talk about you, even if they badmouth you, Stay the course. Trust his character. Believe on him who is a change agent. Continue to speak faith into the lives of other people. And when they come to you, it's not because they've just wandered about and accidentally bumped into you. God predestined an opportunity for you to share the faith of Jesus Christ with somebody else. Listen. People are hungry for the gospel again. They're hungry for grace again. They are hungry, whether we are or not, they are hungry for the gathering. Most people just need an invite and someone to walk them through and disciple them and help connect them. This is not the pastor's job. Although we have a pretty large staff, it's not our, our job. Our job is to fill you up, give you what you need to be difference makers and disciple makers. Number one, trust his character. Number two, trust his content. Somebody say, God don't play. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. Slow to anger, but great in power. He'll not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up and he makes all the rivers run dry. What does the Bible say about those God will take vengeance on quickly? Who will God take vengeance on? Those who curse God and take his name in vain. What does it mean to take the Lord's name in vain? See, those of us that live in the South, we've always been taught it saying GD. And yeah, we shouldn't say that. That is a form of taking his name in vain. But it's really putting your mouth on a move of God. Putting your mouth on the things of God, the people of God, the church of God. Dishonoring God with your mouth. Dishonoring who he is. It's not just slipping up, stubbing your toe and saying a bad word. It's a lot more than that. It's when you disrespect that which you don't understand. When you mock that which you don't know. Well, you become a stumbling block in the way of someone getting touched by God because it doesn't fit in your theological book it says and his ways are not our ways and God can use anybody and God will use you if you will allow him to those who curse God and take his name in vain those who reject him see his vengeance is not for those of us who love him who are doing the best we can his vengeance is for those who have said appreciate the offer I don't want nothing to do with you I'm going this other way and I'm going against everything you've offered me. And not only am I against the grace you've offered me, I am going to fight you tooth and nail and keep people from experiencing the grace that you offer. Those who reject God, those who take his name in vain, those who make a mockery out of the things of God, those are the ones he will judge. Those who hate his people. He'll take vengeance on those who hate his people. And listen, Unless you're not paying attention, authentic Christ followers the world hates. Now, not all of us get to a place where we can be hated by the masses and the millions. That's why I tell preachers all the time, be careful what platform you pray for because some of you aren't ready for it. Because the more you do in the kingdom of God, 
the more haters you will attract. And you can't stay true to the word of God without somebody not liking you. Those who hate Israel. Those who hate Israel. Those who rebel against the things of God. Those who worship other gods. Those who persecute and harm innocent children. He will avenge. Those who oppress and abuse others. You say, ooh, this isn't very popular preaching. It's Bible preaching. John three thirty six. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Boy, we love to celebrate that, don't we? We love to talk about for God so loved the world. But then it says in John 3, 36, And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Romans 1, verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So we must trust his character in this season. We must tr trust his contempt. There are things that make God mad. We need to try not to do those things. And if we venture into one of those categories, we need to repent and come back to God. We need to pray for our leadership in this nation. From the White House to our local government leaders, to those who protect us, we need to pray for them every day. We need to pray for freedom, spiritual liberty, religious liberty. We need to have the freedom in this country to worship and to serve and to lift up the name of Jesus. And we must fight for it, friend. If it's to be taken away, it can't be taken away without a fight. And I close here. During uncertain times, we trust his character, we trust his contempt, but we trust his compassion. As we've said, the Lord is good. Understand that he is good. He wants what's best for you. He wants what's best for us. He wants to do diligent to those who love him. He wants to take care of us, provide for us, protect us, cover us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, give us grace and victory and joy and peace and purpose and legacy and all of those things we preach about. That's who he is. We just have to accept his free gift of grace, repent where we've fallen short, and we have to enlist in the army of God. Listen, I know we're all tempted to stay in our comfort zone. The same little group of friends, same little deal we do, the thing we're good at. But I'm telling you, if we're going to see the kingdom made manifest on earth, it's going to take an army of people doing what they were put here to do, being sold out for the cause of Christ, moving forward, expecting God to show up, avenge us when necessary, but bless us consistently. He'll do it. He'll do it. Trust his compassion. He's patient with us. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, people will oftentimes quote the Old Testament, and they'll say, how is this a loving God? He wiped out cities. He wiped out people. But they don't talk about the 200 years of murder and the killing of babies and his people being in bondage and the pain that the Assyrians caused so many of his people. Sometimes things have to be avenged and made right. And the only way to make them right is through the sword, especially in the old covenant. He's patient with us. Psalms 86 says he is full of compassion He's long-suffering and gives us the abundance we need to do what he's called us to do. He's patient with us. His power brings answers. How many of you have ever had God just speak to you in a powerful way, in, in a night vision or through a circumstance? Anybody? I'm not necessarily saying audibly, but have you ever just had God, you just knew what God was telling you to do? Me too. It says that he, he uses the whirlwind. In this text, you know, God spoke to Job out of the whirlwind. The Bible says he removes demonic activity through the whirlwind. He comes 
with the whirlwind. And at Pentecost, he came as of a mighty rushing wind. God will use powerful acts of nature to speak to his children. The Bible also says that his judgment cometh like a whirlwind. A whirlwind. God is speaking, God is moving, but we must understand that he is moving on our behalf, that he will set things right, he will avenge his children, and we have to trust him, his character, his contempt, and his compassion, and understand his ways are not our ways. His timing may not fall in line with our timing, but he can't lose. He'll never fail you. And his love and mercy endures forever. You know, bad things happen to God's people and to good people. We all face difficult circumstances and tough times, but there is hope in those difficult seasons. Jesus Christ is the hope that we can hold on to during difficult times. Listen, if you're struggling right now, just cry out to Jesus. Ask him to save you, heal you, help you, feel you. Jesus will answer you. So no matter where you are, what time of day it is, I believe if you cry out to Jesus, if you'll ask, the Bible says, he will answer you. If you ask Jesus and you've received a touch from God, go to my website, RonniePhillips.org. We want to help you get started in your relationship with the Lord. I have a very special offer for all of my partners and friends today, or potential partners and friends. We have a series, a preaching series, through the book of Nahum. I want to make available to you for just $10. Listen, that's nothing. You can't even go eat for $10. But we want you to have the verse-by-verse -verse teaching through this timeless book. If you'll go to my website, RonniePhillips.org, you'll see where you can download these messages and listen to them at any time. Every penny you sow into Ronnie Phillips Ministries International helps us do the work of the ministry around the world. We are so grateful for your partnership, your friendship. It helps us give hope and help. Thank you for watching Fully Alive. We'll see you next time. In a world full of social unrest, wars, and natural disasters, how can you find peace? When you look to God's Word in history, you can discover the secret to trusting God in the middle of uncertain times. Pastor Ronnie Phillips has taken a small book in the Old Testament and walked step by step through it to uncover some valuable truths for us today. In the series, The Riches of Nahum, Pastor Ronnie helps you to trust God during uncertain times, to be sure of the things you believe in, to learn what is impossible without God, and to discover the consequences of our actions. For just $10, you can download the complete study through the riches of Nahum now. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to order. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.